together to make, you know, build Barry up to be the vibrant community it once was at the same time dealing with all the corrections. Our next question is near and dear to the League of Women Voters, our hosts. Uh, some Vermonters are disgruntled and have lost faith in the political process. What can you tell us and our audience about how you personally make policy and legislative decisions? Are you, are you most motivated by your political party or your conscience or your constituency? Tell us about your decision-making process. And Lars, thank you to start. Well, I can only 90 seconds and tell you it really is a, a, a divergence away from really having a good conversation. It doesn't sound like politics is what frustrates a lot of people. So I did that. Um, I've been lobbyist for 20 years, so I understand the process. I understand what goes on up there. Uh, it's not always great, but it, it does get things done. Um, one of the things that I think would stimulate more representation is people, you know, I. First, it's just not very good. I really do put people in charge. I'm a Republican because I believe in fiscal conservatism. I believe in free market principles to apply to provide the government to create a more accountable, transparent, and affordable government. But um, I do want to listen to folks. I just want to listen to uh, One of the things I would really like to work on this year is, is how the Senate is actually made a portion. Um, if you live in Chittenden County, you've got 14, 15 people on the ballot. How the world do you know who you're voting for? And in Royal County, you have two people on the ballot. So you got confusion and no confusion in different districts. And then when you do have the elected body, uh, in Royal County, in Orange County, has only one senator to go to. Yet in Chittenden County, you have six senators to go to, which is 20% of that body. Uh, you know, I think you need to look at that. I'd like to look at four year senator terms, two year, two terms, two member districts, three member districts at the most, uh, and stagger them. That way you have continuity, that way you have more representation, and the people want to feel more part of all of that system. I'm not gonna a lot more to talk about, but 90 seconds flies by, and you don't have a conversation in 90 seconds. Well, you're right about that. And I do want to urge folks, by the way, to, um, to hang around after, after our discussion. Um, all the candidates have said that they're willing to have meetings and chat. So um, we certainly encourage you to do that. But meanwhile, in the interest of yeah. Um, I'm sorry, can you the question just for a second? Please? Sure. Yeah. Can you tell us uh, about how you personally make policy and legislative decisions? Thank you. Um, I'm the, uh, I want to say that I'm the only uh, non incumbent sitting on this panel who has experience being a member of the General Assembly. So I served six years as a state representative. Quite often, you know, I'm a highly opinionated person. And I make no bones about that. I'm glad to have conversations with people about my opinions. But I also have an open mind and want to learn. One of the wonderful things about serving in the legislature is that you have a whole host of people on all sides of the issue that come and testify by, before you. And as I listen to testimony, quite often my position shifted or changed, either in subtle or in, um, in complete ways. And so the way I make decisions is I go along with this general sense of human values that I carry and I listen actively to people and what they're saying and try to figure strategically the best possible way to move forward so that our agenda of moving Vermont in a forward direction is working. Johnson State College has the state and local government on the basis of spending the 50 states that come in the um, that the state of Vermont has the best legislative process in the nation. Uh, here are some illustrations for that. Uh, it's unheard of in, in other states that you'd ever get a minority um, member of chairmanship. Thank you. 
do so. Um, the other thing is the citizen of the legislature is, is we're one of the few, our New England does have a citizen legislature, most of the northern New England states do that. But the citizens bring jobs because you don't earn enough money in the legislature. So to survive, so you've got to have jobs. But people have, most of the people have jobs, they bring that experience in, and um, that, that experience help make for better legislation because I'll ask a legislator who has a job that I don't have and ask him his opinion on that particular issue. That happens all over the state. So I can't be a... <clears throat> um, there's always criticism, but I would say that I'm balanced with the, the best legislature in the nation. Thank you. Anthony, yeah, thank you. Excuse me, for the last 30 years or so, my work has really been about helping other people have the voice and issues and the challenges that affect their lives. I've done it with farmers, I've done it with seniors, I've done it with workers. I often tell a story, which I will briefly tell you about a group of farmers that I was meeting with because they were having trouble struggling to pay high property taxes. This is quite a few years ago. And one of the farmers, a select board member, looked at me and he said, you know, Mr. Polina, the problem is nobody in Montpelier listens to us anymore. And I never forgot, forget that, but I also never forget the fact that we made Montpelier listen over the course of several months because those farmers found a way to raise their voice and be heard in a way that could not be ignored. And that's what I think is really important, is that as a policymaker, I work with and listen to citizens, politicians, elected officials, always have loud voices. Citizens need to have a voice as well. Um, one of the issues that I've been able to lead coalitions on, which have included things like prescription drugs and health care and a number of other issues, has been campaign finance reform. There's been one of the ways to make people feel better about the system is to get the influence of money out of the system. In fact, I work with the League of Women Voters and Common Cause and a whole range of other organizations to pass some very significant campaign finance reforms here in Iran that actually resulted in then Governor Howard Dean referring to me as Mr. Campaign Finance Reform when he was signing the bill to put it into law. I would also mention that just yesterday I actually returned a campaign contribution that came to me from a Montpelier Corporation simply because I don't take money from corporations and I think it's important that we as policymakers not be influenced by money in any way. David I I have the uh, privilege of being elected and, and serving people in Montpelier. Uh, my intention is to serve the people and, and vote the way uh, people would like me to vote. Um, that being said, the I think 